nobody wins when the family feels. A victim of sex trafficking is suing a major hotel chain. She claims Wyndham Hotels knew about the trafficking going on at one of their hotels, but did nothing to stop it. Six, a 19-year-old girl rescued from an apparent sex trafficking ring in Lakeland. The team claims that she was being held against her will and forced into prostitution. Tell Clark in Fulton County has been indicted for human trafficking. It's a story we first brought you last month. Deontay Johnson is a former employee at the Economy Hotel off Fulton Industrial Boulevard. Today in Prince George's County for this next story, police there confirmed today what many local music fans had been seeing on their social media feeds. Two men killed in a shooting at a motel in Camp Springs were both local performers. Yeah. For possibly three days, deputies say the 19-year-old girl was held captive at this Super 8 motel in Lakeland by a man and a woman. Tuesday afternoon, alone in that motel room, she sees the moment, they say, calling 911 and her mom for help. There was uh, a suspect that she said was uh, the person that was keeping her captive and forcing her to prostitution in a car outside of the parking lot. The motel owner told us the man and woman checked in on Sunday and paid cash for the room. The owner was unaware of what allegedly happened in the second floor room on the back side of the motel until we told him. When you're going on family vacations, some would say, staying at a motel is not even a thought. Minus the very cheap stay, what is the pros? Some would say, the cons definitely outweigh the pros. But let's be real, motels are still in business to this day, mainly for the purpose of using cash to accept as a payment or prepaid cards. But unless you're just down on your luck or trying to save a dollar, who and why would that be your first form of payment? Drug dealers, pimps, etc. But family, what if I told you that the people who control these illegal activities are the owners of these motels? One known motel with over 2,000 locations is Super 8. I'm sure if you haven't stayed in one before, it's a high probability that you drove past one one day. Now, just last week, January 17th, 2024, a young woman is now suing Super 8 and the corporations that own the hotel. In this 70-page lawsuit, she's identified as Jane Doe. Now, we're going to get into details about this lawsuit later in the video. But this victim is a legend. She was forced into trafficking as a minor after applying for a housekeeping job via Facebook, which was the first red flag. This lawsuit alleged that this went down for almost three years straight. In this video, we will go into detail on how. But as I sit back and explain this video, fam, all this makes sense. Honestly, it do. And it's unfortunate. I mean, go ask your friend if they would stay at a motel. And be more specific. Like, would you stay at a Super 8? More than likely, they're going to tell you no. I mean, it's considered a two-star hotel that managed to have reviews that indicate they four stars. Look at comments like this from Super 8 in Arizona. Woke up in the middle of the night, 2.30 a.m. with a loud party on the second floor with body slamming into the walls and looked out the window to see Hooker and Pimp making deal with another man in a pickup truck in the parking lot. Look at this comment, February 2010 at a Super 8 property in LA, California. This place lacked security and there were drug dealers trying to push their products inside of the hotel. This place is scary. The neighborhood was frightening and there were also prostitutes and homeless slash addicts all over the place and renting rooms in the hotel. The desk guy looked at my friend's attire faux fur coat and assumed he was a pimp and that we were his prostitutes and seemed surprised that we had made reservations for more than one night. He kept giving us this strange smile, icky. This place left me with a bad feeling. If you want to stay here to save a few bucks, my advice is to utilize the buddy system whenever you leave your room to visit the vending machines. After checking in for the night, that is probably the only thing you will even feel moderately safe doing. I can deal with scary hotels, but this place is a disaster waiting to happen. Family, tell me how your Super 8 hotel in your city is and your experience, if any, in the comments. But that goes to my initial point. It makes sense. With the bad reputation, how is this business still profitable. And rule number one, in order to stay in business, you have to be profitable. And the bigger question is, how can motels be profitable in 2024? Family, we might stumble on the answer at the conclusion of this video. So before we go over this one, remember, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, 
comment, and subscribe, we're gonna jump right to it. The most recent incident I remember at a Super 8 was in Maryland, and two local rappers had lost their life after one was being set up by a girl who was allegedly a relative of the victim. The robbery was for a guy who went by Moneybags KZ. Stay in Prince George's County for this next story. Police there confirmed today what many local music fans had been seeing on their social media feeds. Two men killed in a shooting at a motel in Camp Springs were both local performers. Yeah, police say one man was trying to rob the other. It led to a shooting. So 23-year-old Xavier Matthews was the target of that robbery. He died from a gunshot wound. One of the alleged robbers, 26-year-old Karan Moore, also died. Police say Moore and two other accomplices raided a motel room where Matthews was staying and then started shooting. Yeah, so today police arrested two survivors. You can see them right there. 24-year-old Kamote Day and 22-year-old Christopher Jamar Jenkins. Prosecutors charged them both with murder. The police chief spoke about the investigation just a few hours ago. I was informed that they were local rappers, uh, you know, and I don't know if that is meaningful or not. Uh, what is meaningful is that we made uh, two arrests. Uh, we have two people in custody uh, who committed that crime. Now, police telling us tonight that one of the suspects charged, Camonte Day, was staying with Matthews in that motel room and is suspected of conspiring with the others to set up this room. Now, from the outside looking in, people will say, a man that's flaunting all his cash, saying that he's rich in his raps. What he doing at a Super 8? Some people will know and say, well, he trapping there. That goes to the original point of this video, honestly. He was allowed to have traffic in and out of his hotel room by Super 8 with no problems and felt safe enough to do so. And as we look at all these different comments and different scenarios for Super 8, we notice in one thing, the easy access to hotel rooms and the blind eye for the heavy traffic, which is how this minor, who's identified as Jane Doe, was trafficked for almost three years straight and not be alerted to authorities. This lawsuit alleged from April 2011 to October 2014, Jane Doe was repeatedly trafficked, often for days at a time at the Paducah Super 8, which is located in Kentucky, and Paducah ABVN, which is owned by the Wyndham. Now, as we mentioned, Jane Doe was looking for a job. She went on Facebook, which I wouldn't recommend, but she found a job listing for the Super 8. Jane Doe was only 16 years old at the time, and based on what that poor teenager probably told that hotel manager, he probably felt she was easy prey from the very beginning. On page 30 of this lawsuit, it states that during a 30 month period that Jane Doe was trafficked at the Paducah Super 8, there were obvious signs that her trafficker was engaged in S trafficking. A, rooms were paid using cash or prepaid cards. B, there were constant and heavy foot traffic in and out of Jane Doe room involving men who were not hotel guests. Jane Doe had approximately 15 men per day as exploiting her at the Paducah Super 8. C, men as exploiting Jane Doe entered and left her room at unusual times and stayed for brief periods. D, men visiting to as exploit Jane Doe will enter and exit the hotel in a manner such that they would be captured by the defendant's surveillance cameras. E, other traffickers were operating out this hotel at the same time that Jane Doe was trafficked there. F, Jane Doe, traffickers would decline room service for several consecutive days. G, Jane Doe would request extra tiles and linen by housekeeping would be asked to leave them at the door. H, Jane Doe trafficker would be present in common areas of the hotel, lingering there while Jane Doe was seeing Johns. It then go on and talked about how Jane Doe trafficker sold narcotics on the hotel property. Also, the front desk staff had a familiar relationship with Jane Doe traffickers. Jane Doe movements around the hotel were restricted and she was confined to her room for extended periods. To say the least family, it was more than enough red flags presented to get Jane Doe some help. And as we wrap this video up, it makes us wonder, what about all the other victims out there who's been held against their will? And is this truly why motels are still in business in 2024? You guys let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.